Today is Monday, June 10th. We've got an update about the U.S.-Mexico immigration deal and why so many people in Hong Kong are protesting. Plus, a space hotel of sorts opening soon and historic wins in both tennis and the Tony Awards. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in less than 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. No new tariffs for Mexico after all, at least not today. President Trump is suspending the 5% tariffs he threatened to put on all goods coming into the U.S. from Mexico. That's because the two countries reached a last-minute deal on immigration policy. The AP reports Mexico said it would send 6,000 National Guard troops to its border with Guatemala, where many migrants cross into Mexico to eventually get to the U.S. On top of that, Mexico says it will expand its program for asylum seekers, meaning migrants fleeing things like violence in their home countries can now stay in Mexico while their legal cases pan out in the U.S. The deal does not mean migrants must seek asylum in Mexico first, which was one measure Trump had pushed for but it seems did not get. Still, President Trump says this is the first time the U.S. and Mexico have gotten a deal like this in writing. Some Republicans, who were originally against the tariffs, have his back. They now argue the president used the tariffs, quote, brilliantly to negotiate a deal. But some Democrats say the president has actually completely overblown this thing. In fact, the New York Times cites officials who say they agreed on the deal months ago during a secret meeting in Miami. And they say nothing about the agreement is actually new. Trump tweeted the report is false. Either way, no new tariffs start today, but Fox News says Trump is making it clear he could change his mind if Mexico does not follow through. (music) Expect to hear more about the Mueller report this week. Starting today, a House committee will begin a series of public hearings to shine a spotlight on the allegations in the report, including possible obstruction of justice and Russia's interference in the U.S. elections. ABC News says we won't hear from former special counsel Robert Mueller himself, who wrote the report, but the committee will interview two former FBI officials, as well as former White House counsel John Dean, who was part of the Watergate scandal decades ago for what Democrats say will be historical context. Also, expect the House to vote on whether to hold Attorney General William Barr in contempt of Congress for not handing over the documents Democrats had subpoenaed him for. But more on that if it happens later this week. Hundreds of thousands of people in Hong Kong are taking a stand against their government. They held a mostly peaceful protest over the weekend that, according to some estimates, was the largest in more than 20 years there. The BBC reports people are fighting against an extradition bill. The bill would basically mean people accused of crimes could be transferred to mainland China to stand trial. Keep in mind, Hong Kong is a territory of China, and it has its own political and legal systems. The Wall Street Journal reports critics are afraid the potential new law could be used to target people who speak out against the government, and people could be unfairly jailed and abused. But some officials say the bill would keep Hong Kong from becoming a safe haven for real criminals, and only some crimes would lead to extradition. Hong Kong's legislature will consider this bill this week. Well, back in the U.S., wet weather is still lingering in parts of the South, after more than a month's worth of rain fell in a single day yesterday. USA Today reports roads became rivers and there were high water rescues. Some areas in North Carolina had to declare states of emergency. The Weather Channel says several deaths across a few states have been blamed on the severe weather, including the one in downtown Dallas when a construction crane fell on an apartment building. And it's not quite over. Some areas could get triple the normal rainfall for June. And on the West Coast, a heat wave could break records this week. CNN says an excessive heat watch is in effect today and tomorrow for parts of California and Arizona. By the middle of the week, the National Weather Service says some areas could see temps reaching 110 degrees. And that could mean even more wildfires. Rafael Nadal just made history. He won the French Open for the 12th time. ESPN reports no one in tennis history has ever won any major tournament that many times. And he's close to reaching another record. He's already won 18 Grand Slam trophies and needs just two more to tie the men's record. The Grand Slam tournaments are considered the four most important tennis events of the year. As for the women, the French Open winner Ash Barty won her first Grand Slam ever. Also in sports, the Stanley Cup Finals will go to Game 7. The Boston Bruins beat the St. Louis Blues last night. That means both hockey teams are tied in the series for now. The final game to determine the winner is this Wednesday. But first, tonight's NBA game is a big one. If the Toronto Raptors beat the Golden State Warriors, they win the whole thing. Stay tuned. 
All right, more news ahead, but first, a quick break for today's sponsor, Noom. Getting in shape is not just about losing weight. It's about healthier habits for things like more energy to keep up with your busy life or just to get more overall self-care so you can feel happier. I know that when I make time to meditate for a few minutes and move around with a workout or a walk outside, I'm in such a better mood the rest of the day and I even get more done. Well, Noom is an easy and convenient app to help keep track of those things that make me feel my best and break the bad habits. And Noom makes great suggestions for new habits I may want to build. Plus, I like having great healthy recipes all at my fingertips. And I like that Noom knows people are human, so there's no shame if you get off track. In fact, Noom is not considered a diet. It's an app to help you build the lifestyle you want. Even making small steps can really go a long way. So try it out. Sign up for your free trial today at Noom.com slash Newsworthy. That's Noom, N-O-O-M, Noom.com slash Newsworthy, and get your free trial. That's Noom.com slash Newsworthy. Now back to the news. NASA says the International Space Station will soon be open for business, allowing people who pay a chance to spend the night. NASA announced the space station will be available to commercial businesses, space tourists, and private astronauts starting as soon as next year. Yes, we're talking about the spacecraft in low Earth orbit where some astronauts already temporarily live. But this trip will not be cheap. The private companies promising to take people to space will have to pay NASA $35,000 per passenger per night, and that would be on top of any costs to actually get the people there. It's all part of a policy change from NASA, which in the past has frowned upon using the International Space Station for any commercial or marketing reasons. In fact, NASA says this is just the beginning. So here's a reminder to check the charges on your bills. A judge ruled Comcast to pay a $9.1 million fine, and that's because it apparently added charges to customers' bills without their permission. And the state of Washington sued. Engadget says the company charged people for its service protection plan. The unauthorized charge went out on nearly half a million bills between 2011 and 2016. And the company reportedly earned around $85 million from it. Comcast will now have to pay a fine and refund every customer, plus 12% interest, within 60 days. Microsoft unveiled its newest version of Xbox, called Project Scarlet. CNET says the device is supposed to be four times more powerful than its Xbox One X and have things like 8K graphics. It'll be released next year along with some new popular video games. And that's not all. Microsoft also said it'll start testing both its subscription game service and its new streaming service this October. The streaming service will let gamers stream any Xbox One game to a mobile device. CNET says it'll be sort of like Netflix, but for video games. And it'll have competition, going up against Google's version coming in November. The announcements helped kick off E3, the game industry's big annual event that's happening this week. A historic night for the Tony Awards. People Magazine says Ali Stroker is the first ever actor in a wheelchair to win a Tony. Stroker won for her role in the musical Oklahoma, which is currently a hit on Broadway. In her acceptance speech, Stroker dedicated her award to every kid with a disability, limitation, or challenge. Also of note from the Tonys, the musical Hades Town led the way with a total of eight awards, including Best New Musical and Best Director. And Oklahoma won Best Musical Revival. The Ferryman won Best Play. And Broadway overall is feeling pretty good, ending the season with record ticket sales and attendance. It wasn't a great weekend for the movie industry. The Secret Life of Pets 2 and Dark Phoenix were numbers one and two at the box office, but both films debuted well below expectations. Variety says The Secret Life of Pets 2 brought in $47 million, less than half of what the original movie brought in, while The Dark Phoenix, the final movie in the X-Men series, made $33 million. That's the worst debut in the franchise's 20-year history. Aladdin came in third place. Ticket sales are still down compared to 2018's record-breaking year at the box office. Some hope Toy Story 4 and Spider-Man Far From Home will close the gap. And that's it for today. You are all caught up from the weekend. Thank you so much for listening and for sharing this episode if you got value out of it. I so appreciate it. And if you want to read more about any of the stories we talked about today, just go to the homepage of thenewsworthy.com, click episodes, and look for today's date. You'll find all the story sources and links right there. The Newsworthy is ready for you to listen every weekday by 4 in the morning. I'll be back with more news tomorrow. Have a great day. Have a great day.